so cozy. Meow, 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 meow. Everybody, welcome to a very special edition of the Jada and Stitches show. We get a lot of requests to make baby blankets and special sorts of stitches and I also get a lot of questions here and there on how to read patterns. So I thought it would be kind of a neat idea if we rolled all three of those into a single tutorial today. So we are making this fan stitch lacy baby blanket. If you can do the granny square, you can do this stitch. I know it looks complicated, but that's the beauty of crochet. It's just one simple pattern repeating itself. Nature is full of patterns that repeat themselves, and that's why there is beauty inherent in a pattern. So we're going to make this baby blanket today. And as an added bonus, I have completely written up the entire pattern. And if you go to our website, the information is in the comment box down below. Just go to the workshop page, scroll down until you see all of our free patterns listed there. Click on the PDF link immediately under this thumbnail and you can print off your own copy of this baby blanket and you can follow along with me as we do the tutorial. The other really neat thing about having a pattern with you is that you don't always have the computer on and if you want to take this project on the road, you can have the pattern with you to kind of refresh your memory as you work on it. So there you go. Go to our website, print off the pattern, and then come on back and we will do the tutorial. Did you get the pattern yet? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, stuff you're going to need. You're going to need a little more yarn for this project than you have for some of our previous projects. I have picked up some nice, soft, worsted weight acrylic yarn for this. It's a, a four-ply worsted weight and it's sort of a satiny finish to the acrylic. So you can also use baby yarn if you want, but this is slightly thicker than your average baby yarn. But baby yarn will work just fine too. And I needed about 300 grams of it. So this is a 140 gram skein. I used two completely and then I used a little bit more of the third one. So you're going to want to get at least 300 grams of yarn. And if you're wondering what to do with your leftover skein, if you're making this baby blanket for someone, you might as well go to our hat tutorial and make them a matching hat to go with the baby blanket in the same yarn. Nothing says adorable like a set. So that's what you're going to need for yarn. And we'll have one more look at this thing before we head on over to the craft table and get started. It's going to be a real simple repeating pattern and we're going to put the single crochet border on as a finish. And if you're familiar with our borders tutorial, you'll be completely familiar with the single crochet border. Nice and simple and absolutely beautiful. Perfect little frame for the prettiest little pattern. So let's grab our pattern, grab our yarn, grab our hooks and stuff, and head over to the craft table and make a baby blanket. <laughs> As I mentioned, I'm using a washable, worsted weight, satin finish, acrylic, four-ply yarn, 300 grams of it. You want to remember to use a hook that is going to create a nice lacy effect. So where I would normally use a 4.25 millimeter hook, I'm using a much larger one. It's a 5.5 millimeter hook because I want to create a nice sort of lacy open stitch. So keep that in mind. Anytime you are crocheting, you upsize your hook, you get a much larger stitch, which will in crochet generally cause a more lacy look. So today I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook. You're also going to need a pair of scissors and far down the road, a yarn needle. And once you've got all that together, let's get going. We are going to start with a slip knot because we are chaining our foundation chain row. So a slip knot is made any way you're comfortable making it. I like to make mine by wrapping it around my fingers and then grabbing it with my hook. But you can make your slip knot any way you're comfortable. Make sure it's not too tight and you want to chain your row to be nice and loose as well. Not super loose but not really tight. You don't want to have to fight to get your stitches um, made in those chains. So this pattern 
is based on a stitch count of, or a foundation chain count of eight, multiples of eight, plus five. So for today's baby blanket, I am going to single, or I'm going to chain a base of 96 stitches plus an additional five. So for a total of 101 chains. So I am going to chain 101 chains, and that will be my base row, which is a multiple of eight plus five. Um, if you want to make this smaller or larger, just remember your chained row, your foundation chain row, has to be a count of a multiple of eight plus five. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 101 chains, and I will see you near the end of that. All right, I have chained 101 stitches, and when you're done chaining, you want to make sure that you go back and you count them all, just to make sure you have the right number. So always take a moment to count at the end of each row, especially when you're doing something a lot bigger like a blanket. And uh, once you're absolutely sure that you've got the right count of chains, and remember that's a multiple of eight plus five, we're going to start row one, and this is row one of the pattern. The pattern is, is consists of two rows repeated, one, two, one, two. And we're going to start with row one. You're going to double crochet into the fifth chain from the hook. So we count one, two, three, four, five. You're going to double crochet and that is you wrap your yarn around your hook, go through that fifth chain from the hook, wrap your yarn around your hook, pull up a loop, so you have one, two, three loops on your hook. Wrap your yarn, pull back through two of those loops, wrap your yarn, pull back through two of those loops. So you have double crocheted into the fifth chain from the hook. You're going to skip three chains. One, two, three. Into the fourth chain, you're going to put five double crochets. So that's wrap, go through the chain, wrap and go through two, wrap and go through two, and we're going to put five double crochets into this same chain. Foundation rows, the sort of the, the beginning row of any pattern is always a little tricky because you're working all of your stitches into a bunch of flimsy little chains. So when you're working your first row, just remember to be patient and take your time. Make sure you count and uh, don't speed through it. So there's five double crochet into that chain. Try to take care too not to twist your foundation row as you go. You want to make sure that your chains all lie nice and flat. That way you won't accidentally miss any. We're going to skip three more stitches. One, two, three. And into that next stitch, you're going to double crochet again. To that, that next stitch, double crochet, chain one, chain one, and double crochet back into that same chain. We're going to skip three stitches, one, two, three, and into that fourth stitch, or the next stitch after those three skipped ones, we're going to double crochet five times. One, two, three, four, and five. After your five double crochet, skip three more stitches, or chains in this case, and into that next chain, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. 
So this is the pattern for the first row. Skip three chains, fan. Fan is five double crochet. You work five double crochet into that one little chain. Two. Three. Four. And five. Once you've completed a five double crochet fan, you skip three chains or stitches. One, two, three. Into that next chain, you work double crochet. Chain one, double crochet. And this is a V stitch. So what you have is a V stitch to start, skip three, a five double crochet fan, skip three, V stitch, which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip three, five double crochet fan. Skip three, V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip three, five double crochet fan. Skip three, V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. You are gonna continue this pattern of V stitch, skip three, five double crochet, five double crochet fan, skip three, V stitch, skip three, five double crochet fan, skip three, V stitch, all the way to the end of row one. And that is where I'm gonna pick back up with you. I'm just coming up on the end of row one. And this is the foundation row of the pattern that we're sort of setting up for ourselves. So row one is a little funny um, and it's typically not repeated. So I'm just put in my last fan. So my last five double crochet fan. I skip three stitches, one, two, three. And into that last stitch, I'm going to end the row much the way it started. I'm going to double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. So I've begun the row with a fan, or sorry, with a V-stitch, and I've ended the row with a V-stitch. Now, technically, our row began with a sort of a chain five. That's why I say this, found, this stitch um, a pattern is based on a multiple of eight plus five, because that plus five is your V-stitch beginning. It's a double crochet, counts as a double crochet, chain one. And that is what your first row is going to look like. And once you've got that all done, we're going to move on to row two. So to begin row two, we're going to turn our work over. We're going to chain three, and this chain three counts as your first double crochet. You're going to double crochet two times into that first chain one space. So when I say chain one space, I mean the little chain one space in the middle of every single one of your V stitches. So you've chained three, this counts as a double crochet. You're gonna double crochet right into that space two times. So this will technically count as three double crochet at the beginning of row two. You're going to skip three stitches. So skipping three stitches technically brings you to the top of your fan. So you count one, two, three, and the next stitch is the top of your fan. So if you're just eyeballing this as you zip across, always grab that middle top stitch of the fan, and that's the stitch you're going to work into. So skip three, and the next stitch you're working is the top of your fan. Into that fan, you're going to work a V-stitch. That is double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Skip three stitches, 
that brings you to your chain one space and into that chain one space you're going to work a five double crochet fan. So this is what I mean when I say that your beginning row, so your row one of any kind of pattern is always a little bit finicky, maybe it's a bit funny because you're working into chains. You've got to pay close attention as you count the chains but once you actually get into the body of your stitch work it's a little more obvious to see where your next stitches have to go. So you skip three, which brings you to the top of your fan from the previous row, and into that top stitch you're going to work a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip three stitches, which just happens to bring you into your next chain one space, and you're going to double crochet five times. So that's that pretty little fan pattern. And that is going to be row two. So for right across row two, you're going to work five double crochets into each chain one space from the previous row, and a V-stitch, which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into the top of each fan from the previous row, or every three stitches. So you can choose to count your three stitches and work into the next space, which would be the V-stitch here, five double crochets. And then you can choose to count your three stitches, which takes you to the top middle stitch of your fan from the previous row, or you can eyeball it. Five double crochets into each chain one space and a V-stitch into the top of each fan all the way across row two. So I will see you near the end of row two. Okay, I'm just nearing the end of row two. I'm putting in my last V-stitch in the top of that fan. And now I've come to the very end, which the previous row had ended in a V-stitch. So I'm actually going to end this row the way I began it. I'm going to work three, only three, double crochets into that chain one space to finish the row. Now why am I only doing three? Well, if I put in five, it would create a fan and that would end up giving you an edge that wiggled in and out all the way up. So what's going to happen is that your edge is going to remain pretty much straight because if on every other row you start and finish with three double crochets, so like a half a fan, you're going to continue with a nice straight line. So that's the end of row two. Now we're going to roll into row three, so you can turn your work around and we're going to chain four to begin. One, two, three, four. This chain four counts as a double crochet chain one and you're going to double crochet into that first stitch there. And that is a V-stitch. So this is the row that we begin on a V-stitch. The next thing you're going to do is identify the next chain one space and you're going to put a full fan into that. So five double crochets. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And the rest of this row is exactly like the other one. Identify the top of your next fan or count three stitches and into the fourth stitch, V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Identify the next chain one space or count three stitches and skip into the fourth. But in this case it should be, it should be fairly visible by now that that's a chain one space. Put a five double crochet fan into it. Skip three stitches or to the top of the next fan and put in a V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that is your pattern. You're going to continue working a fan stitch of five double crochet 
into each chain one space and a v-stitch into the top of each fan all the way across and that will be row three. I will see you near the end of this row. Alright, I'm just finishing the end of row three. So I'm working my last five double crochet fan into that last chain one space. I've reached the end, which is three double crochet from the previous row, and into that last space I'm going to work a v-stitch. So that's technically the top of the chain three. So I'm just going to work my hook in the top there. And I'm going to work my v-stitch into the top of that chain three. There. And that is row three. So now you can see there's our foundation chain row. Our row one is where we sort of establish the pattern that we're going to build on. Row two began with three double crochet or a chain one or chain three which counts as a double crochet. So three double crochet and then you fan. And then row three begins and ends with a v-stitch. So three double crochet, chain one, or sorry, one double crochet, chain one, double crochet, or if you're starting the row, chain four, which is a double crochet, chain one, and then a double crochet. From here on out, you're just going to repeat rows two and three. So we've completed row three. Row two begins with a chain three. That counts as your first double crochet. And because the first thing that you've come across is a chain one space and you're starting the row, your chain three counts as a double crochet. You're going to work two more double crochet into that chain one space. Remember, because to start this row, it's a half a fan. And that half a fan will keep your edges nice and straight because you don't want it to go in and out and in and out. So the row two, so the even rows, always start with a half a fan. So three double crochet into that chain one space. Then you skip three or go to the top of your fan and put in a v-stitch which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then you continue the pattern across. Go to the next chain one space, put a five double crochet fan into it, skip three, go to the top of the next fan, put in a v-stitch, and so on. When you get to the end of every even row, you'll be working into a chain one space. And I'll just show you quickly. So at the end of this row, this row ends with a v-stitch. And remember, if you're ending a row, you want to put in a half a fan. And I will just do one more repeat of this so that when we get to the end of this even row, I'll show you how the odd rows start again. All right, I'm just ending this row. This is row four. It's an even row. And when I get to the end of an even row, I have to work into the v-stitch from the previous row. I'm ending with a fan, but because it's the end of the row, I want to use a half a fan. So only three double crochets. That's how you begin and end an even row. Half a fan, or three double crochets. Every odd row begins with a v-stitch. So you chain your three that acts like a double crochet, and one more to act as your chain one, and double crochet into that first stitch. Then the rest of the pattern is the same. Next thing is a, is a chain one space, so you put a full fan into it. That's five double crochets. And you continue across your odd row until you get to the end. And in the very last chain, um, sorry, the very last double crochet of that row, which I will show you. So this row ends with a half fan from the previous row. So into that last double crochet stitch or the chain three, you're going to put in a V-stitch. So every every odd row begins and ends with a V-stitch. Every even row begins and ends with a half fan. You can continue this little pattern 
of repeating odd even row odd row even row odd row until it's as tall as you want I'm gonna try and make mine roughly square so I'm gonna work at least 30 rows of this probably a lot more but we'll find out this is entirely up to you you can make this square you can make it rectangular just keep adding rows but when you're finished make sure you end on an even row so always end your final pattern on an even row so you guys can work away at that for a while I'm gonna work away at mine and I'll see you somewhere near the very top of my pattern stitched blanket all right I've just finished the last row that I'm going to put into this little patterned baby blanket um, and I'm going to count them and I figured I would show you how to count your rows it's sort of an easier way to do it and I just wanted to show that after I had finished making it as tall as I wanted it to so if you go right down to the very bottom so this is your chained foundation row here and you can see let's just pick somewhere right in the middle here's a fan that's worked into that chained row so you know that this is a fan in row one well immediately next and kitty corner kitty corner to it is another fan so this is going to be row two you can you can count kind of like this if you want but I just find it easier to go one two three four five six and kind of go up in a little zigzagging manner counting as I go and that way I know exactly how many rows I've done and remember you when you finish your row count you want to finish on a row two or an even row and that is a row that ends with three double crochet at the very end so a half a fan that's what an even row ends on it begins with a half a fan and ends on a half a fan and when you've made it as tall as you want that's the row you want to end on so just to be clear I put in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So I had thought 30, decided it wasn't tall enough, and added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 more rows. So my total blanket row count is 42. And that makes what I consider a nice square shape. So now all I have to do is put on a border. Alright, now we're going to put on a border and this border is going to be very very simple because I want the pretty stitch pattern of the blanket to sh be shown off so I'm not going to put an elaborate border on I'm just going to put a nice plain frame it's like a, a nice plain frame on a pretty picture that's the way I think of it so in order to start our border I'm going to chain one at the very end of my last row I'm going to flip all my work around and I'm going to single crochet, single crochet in each stitch all the way back across the top of that last row of stitch pattern that I made. So I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch. And when I get to the space, so the chain one space, I'm going to work a single crochet into that chain one space. So one into each stitch and one into each chain one space all the way across the top of that last row of stitch work that I, I worked. And that's just going to create a nice basic uh, single crochet uh, row so that I can build my border on. I'm just coming to the end of the top of my first row of single crochet and I'm taking care to put a single crochet stitch in the top of every single one of the stitches across the top of that row and when I get to the chain one space so this chain one space right here I'm working right through it and putting a single crochet right through that entire chain one space before moving along to the rest of the stitches I'm coming to the end so here I am I'm putting my last few stitches in my um, across the top of my blanket and I'm getting to the very end so the end of this row is that chain three that we started the row with so I'm going to put a single crochet into the top of that chain three and because I'm creating a corner 
I'm going to do a really basic corner. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to single crochet back into that same place that I put my first single crochet to end that row. So there we go. Now I've literally turned a corner. So I'm going to turn my work so that now I'm working down the side of the blanket. So just so you can sort of see it here. This is the side of the blanket and I'm going to work all the way down the side. It's the same thing. I'm going to use single crochet but because there's no obvious um, stitches to work into, you got to be a little creative here. So this is the good rule of thumb. A double crochet, in my opinion, is two stitches high, two single crochet high. And since the entire length of our uh, blanket side is consistent of rows that are double crochets high, I'm going to work two single crochet into the edge of each row. So I've put one in the edge of this one already. So I'm going to fit my hook in and make another one. Then I'm going to move on to the next double crochet stitch. I'm going to work two single crochets into the side of that. And be patient because it's a little funny but this is the whole point of putting on the single crochets along the side. Also good to note, I'm doing it in the same color. The reason for that is once I have my base foundation single crochet border row on, you won't be able to tell if there's a little bit of higgledy piggledy along the side. Using the same color just blends the whole thing together and it's not as obvious. Um, so far so good. So now I'm going to identify the next thing which is this edge of the third row down and I'm going to work two single crochets into the edge of that anywhere I can get my little hook in then I'm going to identify the next one and this is this is remember these are all either chain threes or double crochets so find a place that your hook will go into and put two stitches into the side of each one of these rows and I'll show you that again. So there, it's nice and straight. Using two single crochets per row end will not uh, make your work buckle. Um, you're, if you put in too many, it'll get ripply. If you put in too many, if you put in too few, it'll it'll pinch it together. So that's why I think a good rule of thumb is two single crochet per double crochet edge. So if your edge here is a double crochet, put two single crochet down the side of it. And now this is going to take you a while because you want to make sure that you're putting a single crochet through the stitch or two single crochets I should say through each of these side stitches so it's going to take you a little while be patient and I'm going to steadily work away at this until I get down to the next corner and I will see you when I get there alright I'm just coming down to the end of the side that I was crocheting down. So this is this is our first side. I'm just getting down to the end of it and I wanted just to show you quickly that by putting two single crochet in the end of each of those rows all the way down I've got a nice flat even edge going and this is a nice way to create the foundation border row. So I'm using the same color and I've done two single crochet in the end of each of those rows all the way down. And now I'm at the bottom corner and there's my little tail where I started all those ages ago <laughs> and I'm going to work right into that corner stitch. So this is also the bottom the bottom stitch. Sometimes it's a bit hard to find so you just grab that little tail and yank it up and there we go. I'm going to put I'm going to do the same thing in this corner that I did in the first corner. So I'm going to put in a single crochet, I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to work a single crochet back into that same space. And that effectively turns a corner for me. So now we're along the bottom. This is the bottom or the underside of our foundation row. This is a little easier to work obviously than the sides because you have um, distinct chains to work through. And you're going to want to work one single crochet into each of these the undersides of these chains from your foundation row. So obviously a lot a lot easier to 
see where your next stitch is to be entered um, than working down the sides. But if you've gotten this far and everything still feels nice and copacetic, then you are just booting along fine. Okay, I'm halfway across the bottom row and I thought I would just do a little bit of a zoom in here for you, just in case you're having a bit of trouble seeing where your next stitch should go. So the underside of the chain is a little funny looking. Um, you've, you're kind of confronted with three pieces. You've got the top sort of loop, you've got the bottom loop, and then you've got the loop that loops into the next chain. So it's, it's a little funny looking. What you want to do is just fit your hook in underneath the top loop and that little loop that wants to move into the next one. When you get to the bottom of a, um, a chain where you obviously worked a giant fan stitch, just put your hook through that whole space. Then the next one, that would be this one, you see there's the top loop which is sort of the inside of this loop coming over and then there's the bottom loop and then there's that little middle bit that leads into the next one. Just stick your hook underneath those two pieces and that's where you want to put your single crochet. That is, I find, the easiest way to work the underside of a foundation row. But really, all you guys want to do is just create a nice even um, stitch count, a nice even flat border edge. And really, however you get that is up to you. I find that this is the easiest method to just try and use each chain as you go, but if you have to double up or skip one here and there just to keep it all even, as long as you're using the same color yarn, don't worry, it's not going to show because this isn't your complete border. So I just thought I'd zoom in and show you guys that as I worked along the bottom of my foundation row. Okay, now I'm getting to the very edge of the bottom of the foundation row, and once you get to the edge, you can identify the last stitch by this V-stitch that sort of worked into that place along the bottom. So I'm going to treat that. So once again, there's this sort of, um, this, there's your fan and then there's the little kind of V-stitch that started it. I'm going to work my last stitch into the bottom of that V-stitch. So I'm going to treat that as my corner stitch space. I'm going to work a single crochet, two chains, and a single crochet back into that same place, just so I get a nice little corner. And now I'm on to my last side. So I'm on the home stretch now. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. I'm going to work two single crochets into the end of each row along the side so that I get the same effect along this side as I had on the other one. I am just getting to the very end of the last side of this whole thing and I've put my last stitch in the sort of like the stitch where I feel that my first single crochet was created so it's sort of like that corner area and there's a little bit of fudging that's going to go on here, so it doesn't have to be exact. Don't be trying to split hairs or anything when you get to the end. If you see that your single crochet started across the top, identify the first one, put a stitch in below it, do your chain two, and then you're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet, so a slip stitch to join the row, because you're joining the row now. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to keep going. I've joined my rows. I'm going to continue in the same color. If you're changing colors, this is what you do. You identify that little chain two space that we created here. Join your yarn with a slip stitch, chain one, and then you single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that corner. But because I'm continuing with the same color, and I slip stitched into that first single crochet that I created to start my foundation border row. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet into that first stitch. And I'm going to single crochet into every single stitch along the top of this row. 
If you followed our borders tutorial, you will be familiar with the single crochet edge. And that is basically just putting layers and layers and layers of single crochet around and around and around your blanket. That causes a nice strong border to be made. It creates stability. Um, it keeps all of your fancy stitch work from getting pulled one way or the other. And it just gives a nice, plain, simple edging to your blanket. So I'm going to continue here in my single crochet. And when I get to the end of this row, I'll demonstrate another corner. Alright, I'm just nearing the end of my first side of my second row. And I've gotten to the very corner. And there's my little chain two space that I created. And it's going to be kind of small, so let me just stick my hook in there so you can see it better. So there's my chain two space separated by the two single crochets. Into that space, I'm going to work single crochet, chain two for a corner, and single crochet. I'm going to turn my work so that I'm working down the side and I'm just going to continue single crocheting into each stitch all the way down. And now, since I have created a foundation of single crochets all the way around my work, it's a whole lot easier and quicker um, to work those single crochets because now you know exactly where you need to put your next stitch. And so far, that's two rows of single crochet border. Looks pretty nice, nice and square. All right, from here on out, if you're just going to continue, um, you can continue in the same color or you can change colors every row. Just remember to fasten off your work and join your work with a slip stitch in a corner space. In each corner that you single crochet up to, and so into each of those chain two corner spaces, you're going to work single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And that will create a brand new corner space for your next border row. And you can put on as many rows as you like. Just remember, you always want to try and use the same sized yarn um, and preferably the same feel, especially when you're making baby blankets. You want that edge to be nice and smooth. And you can put on as many border rows as you like. You can make that row as thick or as thin as you like. It's entirely up to you. Me, I'm going to put on a total of four border rows and then I will nice and neatly fasten off, weave in my ends, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. So I'm just finishing my second border row, and I just wanted to demonstrate once more how to close off your row. So I'm still doing the same color, and I didn't join a new color, otherwise it would have been really, really obvious because I would have joined it in this sort of corner space. But here's the corner space that I finished row one with, and you can see that there's my first single crochet of my second border row right here. So into that space, I'm going to work my last corner, which is single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And I want to join now. So I'm going to put my hook through that first single crochet of the second row, and I'm going to just slip stitch to close it off. There. Now I'm still going. I'm going to put two more rows of border onto this pretty little blanket. So because I'm still going, I chain one. I'm going to single crochet into that same place that I joined with. And I'm just going to keep on going. And by the time I get all the way around to finish off row three, I'm going to come up on this corner, put single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that corner and join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet that I just made. So I'm going to put in two more rows, then I will snip off, weave in my ends, and I'll be all done this pretty little blanket. All right, I have finished my four rows of single crochet border and I've just gotten to the end here. I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. I've already snipped my yarn. So there's my 
slip stitch and to fasten off you just snip your yarn like I have here already pull it all the way through that last loop that was on your hook and give it a nice tight tug and there you go now your border will have a little tiny bit of a ridge here but I mean it's barely noticeable that's just from chaining one and single crocheting to start each row so don't stress too much on it that's why it's nice when it's done in the corner because it'll well it'll barely be visible as you can see now we're going to weave in the end so you want to just grab your yarn needle weave up the tail end of that yarn flip it over so that you're sort of looking at the back of your last few rows and I like to pick up a few stitches and pull it out and then double back on myself so I will skip one here's where I came out I'm gonna skip over top of that go into the next one and just put my hook or I should say put my needle back through all of those and just make sure that I haven't pulled it too taut and I'm just going to trim off that last little bit so grab my scissors and just snip off that last little edge there now if you're giving this away as a gift or even if you just want to keep it for yourself I recommend a little bit of light blocking and that's really simple you just lay this down on top of your ironing surface on a towel set your iron to steam and then lightly run the steam over top of the entire blanket don't touch it to the blanket just let the steam loosen up the fibers and that will make all of your rows lie nice and flat so that is a nice little finishing touch and here is the entire blanket it's so big it doesn't even fit in the camera shot <laughs> ah this is so pretty and there you go one pretty little baby blanket I hope you guys enjoyed making this as much as I did and if you are making it for someone be prepared to hear wow you made that because <laughs> it really does look fancy doesn't it so Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. This was a special edition of the Jada and Stitches show, and we really, really, really appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook, and if you make this, please post a picture for me to see it, because I love to see what you guys make using our tutorials. You can also follow us on Google+, we're on Instagram, we're on Pinterest, and of course you can follow us on Etsy. And we have lots of cute little patterns in our Etsy shop for sale for a nominal fee. If you don't mind supporting us, we really, really appreciate it. And it helps us keep going here at the Jade and Stitches show. So thank you so much for all of you who have popped in and supported us there. And to everyone else who posts pictures and pops in every week to see what we're up to. Thank you so much. We'll see you again really, really soon for another Jade and Stitches show tutorial or a quick tip. And... Happy crafting, everybody! Bye!